Good morning everybody, Martin here, Trune of Ministry. Welcome with me and um, I'm glad that um, you are following this messages of Trune of Ministry. Um, you will see the previous work very important, O Jerusalem. And um, it's so important maybe first to see that message and teaching and um, before you listen this morning to the new one, a new bride. Um, sometimes it's like part A and B, and if you, you know, started with part B, it will make sense, but you will always have questions and this thing in your mind, but is this truly, you know? But um, you would know that um, I'm a teacher that will use scripture to explain scripture, and um, I believe that that is the truth and people can hear the truth and the truth set men free. So if you have your Bible, you may turn Matthew 22. Matthew 22 verse 1, and I'm going to read a few verses um, speaking on a new bride. Alright, so one thing I cannot understand is that uh, in theology, um, and there is million, millions of people and churches and denominations that believe that Israel, the literal, natural Jew, Jewish people, is the wife of God. But um, it's not so. Scripture, um, if you follow me, you will hear that it's about the church. The church is the wife of God. And the wife and the church... Um, belongs to all nations and all nations belongs to her so Jesus Christ will not divorce you to go back to the old woman you will see in scripture there is from the beginning two women it's all about two women two women two women the one woman is the old covenant the old Jewish um, um, women that God um, came to and she did not want him as a husband and then Jesus Christ came for the another woman so Matthew 22 verse 1 Jesus spoke to them again in parables so this is a parable meaning there's something very important truth about it it's not straightforward but you need the spirit of the Lord to reveal to you. All right, because it's truth. Saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. All right, the kingdom of heaven. So the son must be the king, the king's son. The king is the Lord Jesus. All right. And, and the son is also the Lord Jesus Christ. So the father would... Um, a wedding banquet banquet is a feast for his son he sent his servants verse 3 to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come but they refused to come you don't need to have um, a great um, intellectual mind to know who this is it's speaking Jesus 2000 years came to the Jewish people and they refused to come to this banquet. Verse 5. But they made light of it. Oh, who is this Jesus? They made light of it. And went their ways. They went their ways. Alright. One to his farm. Another to his merchandise. Like I said, go and listen to the previous one. Because it is all about the women, the prostitute. That gave herself to other um, gods and to other men and kings of this earth. And so God would come and say, I'm going to devour you. I'm not happy with you. And then he actually divorced her and he came to listen. But they made light of him and, and they went to one to his farm and another to his merchandise, meaning they are busy with selling and 
doing things. You remember last week the ships, the merchandise will not be found in you anymore. And the bridegroom and a bride. All right. Then it says, and the remnant took his servants and entreated spitefully and slew them. So the Jewish people took the servants of God. Now, always in the Old Testament, when God speaks of servants, he speaks of his prophets. He always would say, the prophets, my servants, the prophets. So the Jewish people killed the prophets and killed our Lord Jesus Christ. So the remnant took the servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Verse 7, but when the king heard hereof, so that's God the Father, he was wroth. He sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Burn up their city. Burn everything that they stand for. All right. Now Jerusalem is the mother city of the, the Jewish people. But it's also not only a natural city, it is actually the mother, it, it represents the whole Jewish nation. When the Bible speaks, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, it speaks of the people of God, the nation of God. All right, because Jerusalem is the mother city, it's just a symbolic view or image, all right, of the people of God. It says, he burnt up their city. All right, go and listen to O Jerusalem, the previous work, week. Then verse 8 says he to his servants, the wedding is ready. So remember, the kingdom of heaven, 2,000 years ago, go and fetch the Jews. They did not come. They killed the servants, the prophets. The wedding is ready 2,000 years ago. Jesus is the son who came to be married. They did not come to this wedding feast. It is ready. When? 2,000 years ago already. But, but they which were Biden were not worthy. They were not worthy. Verses 9. Go ye therefore into the highways, as many as you shall find, but to this marriage. Bring them to the marriage. When? 2,000 years ago. All right. So those servants went out into the highways, gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. The servants of the Lord, the disciples of the Lord, the prophets that are with Jesus went out in Jerusalem and Judea and get this wedding banquet full, furnished with guests. So, how do you ask people to come to the wedding? Hey, let me tell you. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Do you want to accept Him as Lord? Yes, I want. Now, come to this banquet. So, listen. A feast and the eating is always after this reunion, this married. All right? We do not eat before this um, married church thing. You understand? So come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, accept him. You are joined with the Lord. You married with him by being accepting him as your husband. Now you are one. Like husband and wife are one. All right. So that you can be intimate with each other. And then you are at a feast. All right. It furnished with guests. That was verse 22, verse 10. Small and great, come. Come to this wedding feast. All right. Now I want you to go to Revelation 19, verse 1. 19, verse 1. Now remember the previous um, sermon that I said, O Jerusalem, I've spoken on, on, on our line. You remember, yeah, there's Jesus Christ. I've talked about Isaiah 1 and 2, an Old Testament prophesy that prophesied about this harlot woman that went after other gods and did not receive the son, receive this bridegroom. 
Then John would come here and say, I am the announcer of Jesus Christ. All right? I am the announcer. So Jesus Christ tried to, to, to um, get married to you, but you did not. You killed all the prophets. You did not want them. And then we have read Revelation 17 and 18, Revelation, that's not a future thing, but speaks exactly the same of this harlot, the burning of this city, Babylon, and Egypt, and Jerusalem, this woman that went after other gods. All right. Now, verse 19, the, uh, Revelation 17 and 18 is all about the judgment of this old woman, all right, the harlot, Jerusalem, the Jewish nation, the old covenant, all right. Now verse, uh, Revelation 19, it's about a new wife or a new bride that is to come. That we have already read now about Matthew 22, saying, go and get, go and get, go to the highways. Revelation 19, verse 1. After these things, I heard the great voice of much people. So after Revelation 17 and 18, is the harlot burning, all right, the city burn, the, the, the women are dealt with, all right, the prostitute. Revelation 17 and 18. After this, all right, after this, I had the great voice of much people in heaven. All right, in heaven. Now, this is not in heaven like a place in heaven. It's in the spirit realm. We are, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is like a marriage. All right, the son want to be married to a wife. All right, kingdom of heaven. Now I see many people in heaven. Where? At this banquet, the banquet was full of guests, of all voices, great voices of much people. Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto our Lord God. For true, the righteousness are his judgment. Oh Lord, the Lord's judgment are righteous. For he have judged the great war. All right. The prostitute. Okay, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication. She went after other gods. All right, you remember last week, have avenged the blood of his servants on her hand. God has revenged because he has dealt with this war, this city. All right, sometimes, let me show you the woman. Who is this woman? Oh, this is the woman of God. It's his wife. Oh, she's now a whore. Oh, she's a city. Different views of the same thing. And it says, For God's righteousness, righteousness is true, and judgments are true and righteous. He judged the great war, which did corrupt the earth of fornication, and have avenged the blood of the servants at her hand. Again he said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. Listen, when the old Jerusalem and old women and harlot is the old covenant, her smoke went up forever. There's no way that Jesus had this woman. They went after other gods. Jesus says, I want to be married. Call all the other people, the nations here, and then he will leave this wife and marry the old woman again. But that's the teaching outside, you know. The Lord is only making the Jewish people jealous for now. And then we will go back to heaven, you know, raptured to heaven. And then God will work with his true wife. That is blasphemy to say at least this. It says, he again said, Hallelujah, smoke rose up forever and ever. Verse 5, And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all his servants, and ye that fear him, 
both small and great. You remember Matthew 22 says all the bad and the, the evil and the bad must come. Now Revelation says, 19 verse 5 says, And the voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. Let us be glad and rejoice, verse 7, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife have made herself ready. So, Matthew 22, let me talk to you about the kingdom of heaven. It is Jesus, the son of the king, wants to be married. The Jew does not accept him, they killed him and all the servants. But Jesus, the father, says no. Go out and get the people. He is getting the, the disciples and the disciples is starting to go all over the world getting the people right. Married them and we are at this feast. All right. For the Jewish old harlot has burnt and the smoke will rise forever. All right. Now let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife have made herself ready. How did she make herself ready? You remember Matthew 22? The people had to have clothes on, white clothes. There was one man with not the right clothes. Verse 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. Fine linen. She was granted. By who? By the broom, the groom. Granted her to be cleansed with his blood. Give her white clothes. So I want to accept the Lord Jesus as my husband. But Martin, you are dirty. You have filthy clothes. You cannot marry like that. The Lord Jesus Christ. Accept his offer. Let his blood wash you and give you white garments. Now I'm a right with white clothes. I am now the bride. I can marry to him. I accept him. He accept me because I accept his blood. Now I'm at this banquet. He was granted and to her was granted that she should be right in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Matthew 22, what are you doing with this clothes? You do not have my righteousness on. As Someone that is walking now in this church, in this wedding, trying to be married to Christ with not the right clothes on, with the law clothes. Um, verse 9, And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper. The supper is always after this reunion in the church of the Lamb. The Lamb is always Jesus. Yeah. The Lamb of God. All right. And, and he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And verse 11, And I saw heaven opened. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him, which was called faithful and true, and his righteousness do, he do judge and make war. Now listen, I'm speaking to you about a war, a war, but a marriage is to come. And then I saw the heavens open and Jesus is sitting on a white horse. So I'm waiting for the bridegroom. How is he sitting? He's sitting on a white horse. Try, he's going to make now war. He's going to make war. But this is a marriage feast. But he's going to make war. So, you remember last week I said that the gospel is full of paradox. 
meaning sometimes we look at one point oh jesus he is the lord he is my master i'm the servant and sometimes jesus will say no 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 look at me as a husband and you as a wife sometimes god will say no 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 no. look at me as a creator and you as creation no 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 sometimes i'm the father and you the son so it's different views of this thing but jesus is sitting now he's coming to the supper what supper the marriage supper but he's on a white horse going to make some war another view of this marriage supper do you hear he said to me these true sayings of god and he saw even open behold the white horse he that sat upon him true in righteousness he do judge and make war his eyes were flame of fire on his head were many crowns and he had the name that is no that no name knew but he himself so he had many crowns jesus is sitting on a white horse he's going to make now war but he's also coming to get his bride to feast wedding feast he has a name on him that only he knew and he has many crowns that means all the people that are coming to this banquet who is coming actually to this war party will have he will have many crowns with him to give that crowns to them i want the jewish people to come but they killed my servants they killed me but they did not know when they're going to kill me my blood will wash them cleanse them give them new garments and then i'm going to call all nations to be my wife jew included a remnant that is in this old harlot that will not fall for for her filthy schemes and things they will accept me as well with all the other nations go out all right then it says i have many crowns and i had the name and only he knew that name that means if that word new means one all right it's not i know oh i know your name is john oh i do not know that jesus name is jesus all right <laughs> listen the word new actually in greek means i know this woman it means i am intimate with this woman i am intimate i'm one with this woman so jesus had the name and he's the only one that knew he's the only one that is one with that name he's the only one that truly are intimate with that name he is the son of god he only he's the only one that is the lamb of god he's the only one that knew his name i am not the lamb of god i'm a son i'm a king i'm everything but i'm not the lamb of god he's the only lamb of god he's the only door so that name has many names but he's the only one that can fit the um, that purpose for the father he is the bridegroom nobody else we are the bride all right you understand all right let's go on um many crowns he verse 13 and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood all right so he was killed when he came to this when he opened this heaven and he was on a white horse coming to the marriage supper but it's also a war to come a supper for war a war supper all right many crowns come to this wedding He clove, he's dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. Jesus Christ is the word of God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. All right. And he became flesh and lived amongst us is Jesus Christ. All right. 
So he is dipped in blood. And the armies which were in heaven follow him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. The armies of heaven follow Jesus Christ. Now I believe that part of these armies that followed Jesus Christ, he came to them. They killed the servants and the people of God. All right. They did not come to the wedding. So Jesus came, the heavens opened, Jesus sitting on a white horse, the, the word of God, and the armies, the people, the servants of God that were killed were with them, coming to the people that's alive. To get married because heaven and earth had to kiss, had to be reconciled, had to meet. So Jesus brought all the people that belonged to him with him at the blood, at his cross, and he called the church forth. So we came and became one, this church and the church. Of the first begotten. The people that belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Are getting together. Alright. The armies of heaven follow him upon white horses. Clothed in fine linen. Verse 15. And out of his mouth go a sharp sword. That with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. So out of the mouth of Jesus Christ, coming to this wedding, he had the sharp, a, a, a sharp sword to smite the nations. Now, I thought it is a wedding. Now it's war. Jesus is a sharp sword in his... All right, so what I want you to understand is sometimes when John and Paul and all these people speak of them, they speak of the gospel in one view. So it's like a diamond. All right, let me draw. I hope it's, this is all right. The diamond has many um, shapes. All right, you know our diamond has many facets. And so sometimes... It's the same thing, but we speak here now of the marriage. But John is also speaking of the same thing as a war. This marriage is also a feast. But this feast is also a not so like a feast. Because there's a sword is going to cut people. Listen, let's go read now. All right. And the armies of heaven follow me. Verse 15. There goes out of his mouth a sharp sword. That with it he should smite the nations. Why would God smite the nations? Why would he cut with his word the nations? So that they can bleed. Because they do not belong to him. They need to be redeemed. They need to be cleansed. And God's word are cleaning us. His disciples, he would say, Oh, you already be cleaned by the words that I'm speaking. All right. You remember if you go read Matthew, I don't know where it exactly is, or in John. He would say, Oh, it's John. He would say, Oh, you already be cleaned by the words that I'm speaking. So his word is cleaning the nations. Getting them righteous clothes so that they can be married to him. He smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. A rod of iron. Iron is strong and bendable. It is a measure. A rod is like a, a staff. It is not like, you know, a solid Rod, it's actually a measuring line. What is a measuring line? The word of God is a measuring line. When God speaks, it's a rod, a measuring line. And then you can um, 
you can me meet yourself now measure. measure yourself against this word of god where you are all right and it's unbreakable he will rule them with the word of god the rod of iron that will stand firm you know understand do you understand <laughs> and he will tread past the wine press of the fur fairness and the wrath of the almighty god he will tread treateth the winepress. So this wedding feast is a marriage of the Lamb where the heavens open. Jesus is sitting on a white horse coming to this wedding feast to marry to all these people in the highways and byways. But this is also a place where he has a sword cleansing people with the sword out of his mouth, and rule them with the word of God, that is the iron rod. And it's also the place where he tread upon wine, grapes. Who is grapes? People are grapes. Great grapes. If you crush grapes, it's blood. It's red. The wrath of the Almighty God. So, I have a woman... They do not accept me. They are a harlot. I'm going to burn them. But I need to prepare all the nations with my word and my blood. I'm going to crush them. So that they can be white cleansed, pure garments on. So that I can marry them. Alright. And that is the wrath of God. God's wrath is his word. This is God's wrath when he died. For mankind. This. He took all the wrath. The father took all the wrath. Of sin and iniquity. Upon Jesus. And he died in your place. I'm so glad. Verse 19. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh. A name written. King of kings. You remember he's on a white horse. With many crowns. 16. 16. Revelation 19 verse 16. He has a name, King of Kings. Now, Jesus is always king. He was born king, but he was not king of kings. He was king because there was not kings. So he was born king. Where is this Jesus of Nazareth, the born king? Let us bring our presence to him. All right. But he became king of kings where? Yeah. When he opened the heaven, sat on a white horse, brought crowns with him give it to men who are in this marriage feast wedding to eat with him supper his name is king of kings and lord of lords a lord is a ruler all right someone that rule and reign with the lord jesus christ and you are made a king and a ruler and the Lord, according to Revelation 1, by the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 1, I think is 1 verse 15 says, And he has made us kings and priests for our Lord by the blood of the Lamb. Alright, verse 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the foals that fly in the midst of the heavens. So listen. Jesus is the son or the bridegroom. Come, the bridegroom, the wedding is here. I'm going to crush the people, cleanse them, sort, cut them, make them right, give them the right clothes on. I saw an angel standing in a sand cried with a loud voice saying, All the falls in the midst of the heavens. This false is flying people that I believe means the hungry people. All the hungry people that are in the midst of the heavens that fly. All the birds. Come, listen now here. Listen, we are coming to the wedding banquet. The marriage of the Lamb is ready. Jesus is here on his white horse. He's cutting. He's cleansing. 
He's cleansing the nations. He's crushing them. And listen then, then he says, And this angel that is in the sun cried with the loud voice, saying to the folds that fly in the midst of them, Come and gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God. But he is coming to the marriage supper. You are coming to the marriage supper. Now he's saying to someone to eat. What does that mean? We in the midst of the heavens, those who are hungry in spirit in the midst of the heavens, you can come and eat what I have prepared for you. And I saw, come, gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God. Verse 18, that ye may eat of the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men. And the flesh of horses. <laughs> this sounds strange. Who wants to eat a king? Who wants to eat a horse? This is men. So if I'm eating something, I'm becoming one with that. Alright, this is a little chalk. <laughs> now you see it? No, you don't. I'm eating it. Then my body devours it. And this chalk is going into my bloodstream in my stomach. I'm coming, I become one with it. So all your faults in the midst of the air, all your hungry people, are you hungry for the Lord Jesus Christ? Come and eat, eat kings. You become a king. You become one with the king if you eat a king and a horse. <laughs> all right. And of them that sat on them and eat the flesh of all the men, both free and bond. Both small and great. You remember Matthew 22? Servants come here. Go out and get all the evil, the good and the bad, the small and the rich and the great. Alright. To the wedding. Kingdom of heaven is like a wedding banquet. Small and great. Now this sword is cutting kings and horses, not natural horses, men and things. And then those who are hungry, who are coming to this wedding banquet. But it's also a war. So for some who accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and husband, it will be like a wedding banquet where you eat and for some the sword will cut kings and people in it will be like a war feast if you do not accept him as lord and as the uh, as the bridegroom and you become the new bride you will be the one who is being cut by the sword and the word, because you do not accept this son and the bridegroom. And then you will be devoured like the old women, the old Jewish people that did not accept the Lord. And they follow after other gods and God will say, I will come and I will smite them and I will burn them. Remember previous work? I will burn them. And their smoke will rise forever and ever. Ever and ever. You remember Matthew 3. I just want to read that to you. Matthew 3, verse 6 and 7. You remember now when John was here on earth and he says, I'm the one that pronounced. He started to, he, he, he announced that there is the bridegroom to come. There's Jesus. Yes, my joy is now happy. Yes, because the marriage is here. Listen, verse 3, Matthew 3, verse 6. And they were baptized in Jordan by him, by John, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, 
who warned you and flee and escape from the wrath and the indignation of God against the disobedient that is coming. So here, John baptized people. And this people that follow after other gods, they was rejecting Jesus as the son and as the bridegroom and as the only Lord and Savior. They did not come to this wedding. They killed the servants of God. All right. Now it says, John asked them, why do you want to flee from the wrath that is coming? Who told them about what wrath? The wrath of this cross. The wrath about this thing that I'm speaking of. He says, you are a brute of viper. Who warned you about this? Then verse 10, he says, And already the axe is lying at the root of the tree, and every tree that therefore that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Whose fan is in his hand? There's Jesus. The fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So, John, why do you flee? Says to them, why do you flee for the wrath? This one, the war. Because he's coming. You do not accept him as the, the husband. You walked off the other ones. The fire is coming to burn you. And he will thoroughly cleanse it. He will continually cleanse it. Because I did not live those days. But I live today. He thoroughly will cleanse all the nations. He will start it th this day on the cross, crushing the grapes and the word cleanse people as they live. Cleanse me, cleanse me, cleanse all the people. The rot will, iron rot will crush them and the sword will crush them, making them the wife of this husband. You will be in the wedding banquet eating and those who do not accept him will be at the war feast. You will be the feast and they will eat your feast. They will eat you. They will become your, the kings. They will become the powers. They will become the, the wife of God. Because you are eating the feast, becoming this. Because Jesus has many crowns. In it. I hope you can see what I'm saying. So the fire is burning for some, and for some, it's not. You brute of vipers, who told you about the fire that's to burn? But let me tell you, Jesus is going to cleanse. The fan is in his hand and will fully perch his floor. Where he gather all the wheat, he will cleanse it all day long. And gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff. Which with unquenchable fire. Remember the harlot will burn. The city will burn. The women will burn with fire. But you are a new bride at the new wedding banquet. Eating and feasting with Jesus Christ. And that was Revelation 19. Now, Revelation 21, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. The first heaven, the first and former things, the first wife passed away because I have burned her. I have crushed her. I have trample upon her. I have cut her to pieces. I wanted to marry, but she did not. She killed my servants. 
I have now a new bride and a new wife. And I saw a new heavens and the new earth, a new people and the new heavens. The Revelation 21. At this feast. And it says verse 22. And John saw the holy city. Now it's not a normal city. The Babylon city. The all Jewish city. The Jewish city. Now it's a new city. A new Jerusalem. Not the old Jerusalem. Oh Jerusalem. Oh Jerusalem. Where were you? You follow after other gods. Now I saw a new Jerusalem. Coming down from God out of heaven. Where? When Jesus came, they did not accept him. Go and fetch. A new city started to come out of heaven. As the people say, yes, Lord. The city came to the out of the heaven. I'm a building. My wife is a building. You are a building. As you accept him. The city started to come out of heaven. And it says, a new Jerusalem prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Revelation 21, verse 1 and 2. I see a new bride. I see a bride adorned for her husband. Oh, it's a city. It is a a banquet. It is a feast. It is the new wife. The church. God will not divorce you. Her will always, always be part of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to his own. They receive him not. He burnt and dealt with her. And today the only way. Is for the remnant, those who are left behind in this Jewish nation, is to come in by this way. The way of this Jesus, he's the son, he's the bridegroom, I want to be his bride. He's the door, the only door to the father. And he wants to marry me and eat. Take up your crown. And be a king and the Lord for the Lord Jesus Christ. I rest my case. May this word bless you. I hope you have listened to. Maybe the first one you must go and listen. To where I say to you. Um, the lack of devotion. Very important. Lack of devotion. Go and see that. Then you listen to. Oh Jerusalem. Oh Jerusalem. Then you listen to this one. A new bride. We are the wife of the Lord. Thank you and be blessed. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Hey guys, Lemuel Veneman here from True North Ministries. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below. And also, go follow our Instagram page. Link is in the description. Thank you. Blessings. Amen.